Electronic loneliness. On close examination, people experience nothing whatsoever anymore. Biographies constitute a tactical standstill, a drama without movement. Life, above all, is a matter of inner experience. We bath in a profusion of interpretations, whether to do with suppressed lives, automobile makes and holiday destinations, or domestic problems. The last anchors to cling to are the collective childhood experiences, enlarged to mythic proportions, the pop concerts, parties, summer camps, military service, a strike or a riot, a soccer championship, camping sites and favorite pubs back then. A loop is created from the past which meant nothing to a future that will have nothing to offer. Existence without context is condemned to the present. No breakout, no despair, not a dream. Success is not a triumph, but a necessity. There's no mistaking it. You're only rewarded for the risks you're prepared to take. Once out of context, actions become indefinable. Any willpower or ambition that is brought to bear is arbitrary. There are no external urgent necessities to justify choices of profession, hobbies or partners. No force or coercion to render life evident. Everything must come from within. Actions take on the character of a flight forward, a submission to fate, thought anywhere one can, without ever finding a thing. The result is the diversified extremism of workaholics, Doctors Without Borders, Guinness Book of Records, raves, mountaineering and bungee jumping. Backlash effects consist of disablement, senior workouts, walker shopping, insomnia, chronic fatigue, agoraphobia and incontinence, including the accompanying therapy package. At home we are invaded by science fiction. Spaceships lodge in the living room and the impression is that everybody is on a virtual journey into space. Video games, 800 numbers, interactive media and home shopping have created the right mood and acquainted us with the necessary tactile skills to work at a distance for cash. The axiom of self-realization is casually slapped onto telework. You cannot become a full person unless you make yourself useful. No identity without activity. Pep talks, training and performance evaluation have to prepare the individualized masses for digital piecework. Telework is not an institution but a constitution, a frame of mind to nourish the new work effort. It's a matter of psychology before anything else. What used to be called apathy has become a first requirement for job performance. Isolation must be conditioned to this end. Individuals are locked up in niches where they are one with the network. We are urged to keep our minds on the screen, for it is all we have. No flourishing family life or professional adultery awaits us. Even the promised outlet of virtual sex is a dead end. All we are left with is the bill. The others ever absent radiance and perfection form a social basis for boredom and apathy. Visits have been cancelled and are generally frowned upon. They can only disrupt the programmed order of the day. Intercourse is stifled and the tele-existences remain otherwise invisible and meaningless to one another. Martin Buber, where are you? By all practical standards, the telehovel has become intolerable of children. In this empty, coded environment, there is no room left to create a world of your own. Little people are firmly caught in a monitored development scheme. 
Ever since their moment of conception, they have been clones of a cultural ideal. They are made for perfection. Play has become education as exemplified by computers. Nintendo education lays the medial foundation for future generation gaps. Those who have already grasped computers at age four will never experience the net as the domain of rebellion. So they hang around on the streets, the ultimate forbidden territory, weapons, drugs, sex, fashion, joyriding. Outside is still the domain of the informal, of indefinite chance, fighting over nothing, making out, long waits, breakaways, accidents. The parents, meanwhile, remain chained to their home terminals, forever unable to break free. They find their peers in miscellaneous media and use them to share their despair. Locked inside a perfect world, they simply cannot imagine that anyone would have it any other way. Electronic loneliness cannot be expressed in metaphysical or psychiatric terms. It is not a matter of profound melancholy, but of shallow artificiality. Desolation is a fatal production factor, a trap one stumbles into by reckless thinking and believing in daydreams. Only organized tourism is still considered a way out. The assembly of a collection of psychophysical experiences, from meditation, repentance, exhaustion, ecstasy, fasting and pilgrimage, to heroic relief campaigns. But none of these sensations can help one brace oneself for that highly personal confrontation with the machine. Pulling the plug on the net means suicide. There is no future without the net, and there are no alternative scenarios left. Nothing seems to prevent the advance of enclosures. We have finally left the age of despair. Get serious. Emotions have settled within the archaeological layers of consciousness, in an age in which the history of attitudes is being recorded. The net, as the ideal merry-go-round for self-styled identities, will neither create revolutionary situations, nor bring the world to an end. Cybernetic emptiness need not be filled, nor will it ever be, with desire, disgust, nor unrest. Finally, telematic energy will disappear into the flatland of silence. Commands may still flicker on the screen, but it is you who has disappeared. <laughs>